Well, we need a time limit now. So let's go ahead and add this. So now to add the time limit, what we're going to do is we're just going to, we need to put it, this program onto something. doesn't matter what. So we'll just choose a rock and just set it out here again, just so we can find it easily. So we're going to hit Y to bring up the program again. Now, here's a little tricky thing about timers is that, or scores rather, um, and the score is what we're going to use as like our clock. When the game starts, everything is set at zero. So if you have it set to end the game when the timer gets to zero, it's going to end immediately because it's already set to zero. So first what we have to do is change the score to 60 seconds, let's say. They changed this around a little bit. Okay, 50 and 10, 60 seconds. And we'll put that on the white timer or the white score. So immediately it sets that right when the game starts. And we can even change this to once, although we probably don't need to do that. Switch to page two. So now immediately the game starts, sets the score to 60 seconds, switches to page two. Now we're gonna, we want that timer to go, that clock to go down. So we're gonna say timer every second. We're going to subtract one point from the white score and that should be enough. Now what we're going to want to do though is to say what happens when the timer gets to zero. So now since we're on this other page we can set the uh, when score is zero and remember we have to say it's the white score that we're talking about. Um, we'll say switch to page three. We could just say end the game, but if we say switch to page three, we can have it do some other stuff. Maybe we want some other things to happen when the game ends and not just end immediately. But I'm not actually going to program that in here. I'm just going to make it end the game. So we'll say game end, or actually we should say game win, I suppose. Yeah, we want to win the game. That means we survived the whole time. Okay, so now, uh, now to get this rock to not actually show up, since we don't actually want this rock here, hit X to bring up the settings, and just turn that invisible, and then you won't see it, even though you probably wouldn't see it anyway, because it's on the other side of the wall. So let's run the game, and let's see if that works. So there's our timer, 58, 57, okay, here's the problem. We forgot to turn off the loud visibility of that. Oh, see, and now here's this problem I was talking about with the height of these objects. So I can't actually shoot these guys right now. So there's two things we need to fix. Let's turn off the white. Let's see, where is it? Turn that to quiet. We still want to know how much time we have left. And now we're going to have to mess with that height again. Maybe I shouldn't have messed with it at all since it seemed to be working before. But um, let's see, where is this? Let's move this guy closer just so we don't lose track of all this stuff. Let's just move everything down, including my own puck. So now we're as low as we can go. Another issue you have to be careful we don't want this wisp to actually accidentally fall through the ground, which could happen. But we'll see if this works for right now. So you can see this rock is invisible. Right now we can kind of see it, but it shows us that it's invisible. Let's run this game again, see if this works. This takes too long to generate enemies. Okay, there we go. So that works. That is good. Now, something that we didn't do was have it hurt us when we hit them. So we need to add that in. So to do that, and actually I'm going to change this 
so that it generates enemies quicker because this is kind of ridiculous to have to wait this long. Okay, because we're just testing it right now. We can always change these settings later to really tweak everything the way we want. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to have it so we get hurt when we hit them. So to do that, we're going to program ourselves and we're going to say when we bump into them, bump into uh, puck and they are red, although it doesn't really matter because we can't bump into ourselves. So we didn't really have to do that. Um, we're going to go and switch to page two. The reason we're doing this is so then we can have a whole bunch of stuff happen when we bump. And if we have other enemies, we could add those enemies in. We could just copy this line. And by that, we would just go to move the cursor all the way to the left. You can rearrange lines if you want, or you can hit the left trigger to cut it out and then you can paste it. And so you can paste it a bunch of times and then just change the enemy and leave the rest of the code. So if we have UFOs and things, we could, or saucers as they're called, we could change those and then as soon as we ran into any of the enemies it would switch to page two and then and that's actually how i have the the final game programmed so you can go look at that if you want um so now on page two we're going to say when we bump into anything because the, the only the only time we're going to get to this page is if we bump into an enemy so it's fine if we have it on any anything if we had that on the first page then if we hit a wall it might blow up the wall and we don't want that but we know that that uh, we program this correctly so when we bump into anything here we're going to damage um combat we want to damage let's say 20 points and we want it to damage us. So we're going to go and say me. You could also say it if you want to damage them. But we want to be the ones who die or get hurt here. Now, well, actually, we can just copy and paste this twice when we bump into anything. Let's say we want them to also blow up when we hit them. So we're going to go to boom and it. Make sure you do that, otherwise it will blow you up. Um, some other things we want to add is that if we have no health left, we want the game to end. So let's do that right now. When health is zero, then we want the game to end. And so that'll say a game over. Now we want to, like that. let's just, after all that goes through, let's just switch back to page one. So that should work. Uh, let's test that out. You always like to test after you do any minor change, just to make sure it's working before you move on. I thought these guys were supposed to get created faster. <laughs> um, so let's hit them. Now I think I'm getting hurt, although the camera's so far away it's actually kind of hard to see our health bar. And there we go. We hit, what, three guys and now we're dead. So let's go hit the back button again. Now let's see how much health we have. Let's go to our settings, hit X, and I think it's towards the top. Max hit points, 50. Okay, so we can increase this if we want. Let's just say 100 hit points. And that way, you know, we can get hit five times. Although you might want to change that. Um, you could also, uh, if you want the player to know, since this health bar is so hard to see when you're so far back, you could set a score and just tell you how many times you've gotten hit and that way it would help while you're playing although with these really fast games maybe you don't really have time to look to the side anyway so let's see what else do we need well this game is kind of boring right now let's uh spice it up a little bit and add 
some music in here. Now, this is just to set the variable. So this is really the main page here. So let's say do um, play and let's find some music. Let's go to the new category. Terrible name for a category. New. That really doesn't help anybody. For some reason it's called Omni if you look up here though. Um, anyway, let's use action. I like this music. It's not a whole lot of music to choose from, so unfortunately you're probably going to be hearing a lot of the same music in most of these games. Um, let's see, do we need to do anything else? Well, let's, uh, well, let's go look at... how quickly these guys get generated. Random one second. That's fine, that's not a whole lot of programming though. Um, and it's just gonna be consistent through the whole thing. So we don't really want it to do that. We want it to speed up as it goes through. So let's have this create them that quickly but let's add some more stuff on here. So after 20 seconds, let's have it switch to page two. Now I'm going to cut and paste this just so I can copy it. If you go all the way to the top, you can select the, the whole page. So let's paste that again. Um, now, of course, we don't want page two on there since we're on page two. Now we can change this to even quicker. So after 20 seconds, it's going to start generating these pucks even faster than before. So that's fine. Um, actually, I left that open. Uh, we could have it another 20 seconds switch to page 3, and then it would do something even crazier. Um, so let's do that. And that's going to be the end, so... 0.25 is as fast as we can go, so we'll just leave that for now. And let's run this game and see what happens. Probably be nice if we had another one of these wisps to create enemies for us, and that way it would happen a lot faster. So what we can do is we'll just clone this. We won't make it a creatable object. Uh, if we do that, then they would always be doing the same thing, and maybe we'd want it to do something different. So we're going to pick it up, then hit the right trigger to clone it, right trigger again to clone it, and then we'll just put it down. So now we have three of these guys. So let's run that and see what happens. See if there are any mistakes in our coding. Okay. Looking pretty good. It looks like they are being created faster now. 